It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Denver Broncos and the Houston Texans. And it comes your way next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one, as it'll be the Denver Broncos taking on the Houston Texans. Brandon Gunn and Charles Davis with you from our broadcast perch. And Charles, as we get this thing started, what are you going to be keeping your eye on? Special teams. Field position is always a big determiner in a ball game. Who sets their offense up for success the best? That team will win the game. talk about coming into a hostile environment and just silencing the crowd they just did it couldn't be a better start there's no way all week long they've talked about having this type of a start but i think they looked at it from the offensive team's perspective you know get the opening kickoff you guys control the ball a lot of people are now going to say okay now your offense will they be out of whack no not at all they're going to be absolutely happy they're relaxed they took care of business for them they don't have any pressure now they can just go play Will Lutz on for the point after. And he's got it. 7 nothing Broncos. So how about that for an intriguing start? The opening kickoff of the ball game. Return for a touchdown. So now the other return teams out there as they'll try to duplicate what they just saw. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. Leading them out, a two-year starter at Ohio State and second overall pick in the draft, C.J. Stroud. I tell you what, when he's on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. On the ground, it's Pierce to begin the drive. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. It may be only a gain of three yards, but that back, he deserves a lot more credit on the play. That could have easily been stopped at the line, but his vision and his determination found some space to turn it into that modest gain. Devin Singletary with his first carry of the game. He takes this for three to the 29. Third play of this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. 
Stroud looking to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. That's a pretty good opening possession defensively. And you know the goal is to make something of a statement, especially on the road with your first defensive possession, isn't it? Go right out and establish yourselves and let them know this is going to be tough going all game long. And on fourth down, here's Cameron Johnston on to punt for Houston. And Marvin Mims deep for Denver. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. Leading them out, the fifth-year Auburn alum got his first career starts last season. Here's Jared Stidham. For a brief time, he was thought to be a possible successor to Tom Brady while he was still in New England, but that didn't materialize. But opportunity may still knock for him to start in the NFL today. Definitely has the arm and mobility to make plays against NFL defenses. All he needs now is consistency. They start to drive on the ground. It's Williams. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. But the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. They stick to the ground game on first down. It's Williams. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. On second down, Williams. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. Now after the play, it looks like there's a Texan here slow to get up. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Third and two. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. And he will have the first down as he gets this to the 47. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. You were telling me this yesterday. This is exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation? We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And partner to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. Second and 10. Here's Stidham to throw. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. That's Derek Barnett coming in and making the play. In every game, we talk about what are going to be the keys as we go into it. Maybe that's a key for their defense today. Pressure the quarterback and make sure you play a good zone defense behind them, and they get their first sack of the contest. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Out of the gun, Stidham. Under pressure, they got him again. Looks like a nine-yard loss, and it also brings up fourth. 
They'll make that a second sack here on their first drive out defensively and have to get ahead of ourselves, but they're, they're on pace for double-digit sacks at this point. But they're going to have to find a way to tamp that down, aren't they? So if you're the play caller, you're telling your quarterback maybe some screens, maybe some draws, hard count, use your voice inflection a little bit, anything to try and slow that pressure down. It's a 45-yard punt, but a decent return there of nine yards. And the Texans will take over with a first and ten. Singletary to get the drive started. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Boy, you go three and out on your first drive, and that's not the way you want to start this drive either. It doesn't seem like they're really into it just yet. No, first four plays, you don't want to call it a disaster, but not looking very sharp. The loss of a yard there to start out, that leads to a second and 11. Stroud to throw it toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. As tight ends go, he might not provide the super flashy plays very often, but he's pretty reliable. Usually an excellent target and normally catches what's thrown to him, but he didn't on that play. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. That is caught, and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 16 yards on that one, and also a Texan first down. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup, and on this play, he finds it for the first down. First and 10, it's Stroud. And this one nearly picked off. Yeah, kind of surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but get away it does, and it's second down. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Again, it's Trout. Open man is Noah Brown. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. First catch for him. It's good for a dozen and a first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. And they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and 10. Oh, he had a man open. He overshot him. It's incomplete. Boy, somehow, someone lost that running back downfield. He had acres of space, but this ball overthrown. And that's one you've got to be able to hit on. Now a second and ten. Stroud. Well, that'll be incomplete. Well, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. Stroud on third down now. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. I tell you what, that's a veteran play from a guy in his first season in the NFL. A lot of rookies are trying to force something there. He thought better of it, and that was the right decision. On fourth down, out is the punter Cameron Johnston to boot it away. Oh, it's a wobbler here. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Well, 
And they'll send Judy in motion left. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. And he stopped immediately there. And credit the tackle to Derek Barnett. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there, all 11 guys on defense, diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. Now it's Stidham. This one swung out to Williams. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And it's third and four now. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Here's Stidham. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. And this is what you want to see from a defense. Give up an opening drive touchdown, that's fine. But how about them going back out there, recommitting themselves to the task at hand, and forcing a three and out, and giving the ball back to their offense. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. Here's King. It'll be a 39-yard punt, four on the return, and the Texans will take over. The Houston's offense take it over again. They've had it twice, they punted twice, not the start they were hoping for. Not at all, and let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? So first and 10 now from the 30. Stroud sets up the play action. He'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. That one goes for 24 yards. Stroud to the air on first and 10. Over the middle here to Brown. And he's got this down to the 35. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, but he put it right where it needed to be. Yeah, and that little extra pace that he had on the pass, that required a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. on this drive alone. Three passes, three completions, three first downs. They're taking it to them, and it's paying off. They'll run on first down with Singletary, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Right back to Singletary on second down. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Well, how about the big guy there showing some agility? He just flowed from his D-tackle position in order to make that play. They'll see about converting this third and eight. Throwing now is Stroud. He's got his target. That's complete. Touchdown, Texans. Noah Brown, 23 yards from the touchdown. And the Texans are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. The catch and the touchdown, they were the end result of a terrific route run by the receiver. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point.
It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. end zone Marvin Mims and he returns this to the 22 here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here and Charles a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out and they punted the football yeah and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here they've got to get going They'll throw on first down with Stidham. And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. It looks like a loss of right around 11 there on first down to set him back on second. Boy, that's tough, Charles. First play of the drive, you're hoping to stay ahead of schedule. You take that huge sack, and now you're facing second and a mile. And the entire time, you were probably thinking the same thing I was. Either get rid of the ball safely, of course, or go down. The yardage he gave up on that play, that's going to be tough for them to make up. Now Williams running left. Stiff-armed him. And he'll be just shy of the 20 at the 19 as he goes out of bounds. A sizable gain there of nine yards, but it's still third and long. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Throw out wide is incomplete. Yeah, it's still early in the game. No sense taking a chance on third down, forcing one into traffic. So I like the wise play he made there. Get it to the sideline, out of bounds, where no one's going to have a chance at it. Riley Dixon now to put it away. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. Now fair catch is called for and taken at the, we'll call it the 37-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their 38. And Stroud now to throw. Got this into the hands of the tight end, Jordan. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it's second down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets them a three and out. Two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together. Just what you described. Get them the ball, give them a little momentum, and they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. Stroud now on first and 10. It's complete to Brown, right side. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll make it second down. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Here now, second and four. Singletary here running out of the gun. And he'll be brought down. It looks 
looks like right at the 40. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, you know they had a third down play on standby just in case, but he says no need with that carry. Runs like that will continually earn him more work in this and future contests. On first down, here's Stroud. He'll complete this one to Collins. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. Well, they obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Broke yeah, up. he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. These two teams all tied after one. Ready for the second quarter from Houston. It's the Texans in possession of the football. So first and 10 now from the 30. As they've got it as we resume action. Stroud looking to throw. He's got it to Collins complete. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And these two hooked up on a nice game to play before, and I always admire play callers that see a play that works and go right back to it, so they went right back to him. The reward, they're set up with first and goal. Now Stroud. Now quick throw there is incomplete. It suddenly looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Pierce takes it straight ahead. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal from the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? Something quick hitting. You don't have the time for something that develops slowly. It's got to be right at them if you're going to run the football. And if you're going to throw it, something quick, get it out of your hands in a hurry. Third and goal, Stroud. And got his man. Texans have taken the lead. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And that makes the score 14 to 7. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. This taken in right around the goal line. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. That 7-0 lead of theirs short-lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the formula that got them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they get this game tied up. On first down, Stidham. He'll find his tight end. It's Adam Troutman. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. 
A short one to the tight end, Troutman. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Gardner took a while for him to walk onto a receiver, and he finally found his man coming left to right across the formation. But by the time he got the ball to him, not much of a chance to turn upfield and make anything out of it. On third down, here's Williams. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. 42 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. That was a pretty good job defensively to hold him to a two-yard run, but I've got to think this offensive line, they're asking their quarterback for a different type of a run, one that they rely on, one they have confidence in, one they feel like they can block. Now it's Stidham. And his throw is incomplete. Oh, I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. The Broncos on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and eight. Stidham. chance to scan the field there. It felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here, as this is toward the sideline. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Here's Nico Collins, and this offense getting set to go for another drive. Previous series, definitely a focal point. Three catches, the touchdown grab. As a DB, your former DB, is there a number of catches on a drive you're like, oh, he got the best of us? I'm not sure there's a number, but there's a great feel. And what he did on the last drive, yeah. <laughs> Especially with a touchdown. Yes. You're never way, happy. You're exactly right. The way he capped it off. So you feel that at the sideline, and now you're looking at your buddies and saying, okay, what are we going to do to take things away from him? Because I'm not sure the other guys can make those sort of players. So let's make sure that we don't let him get going again. A gain of three, second down. The passing game's been working quite well so far, but the running game's been a little bit of a struggle, and that's a surprise to me. Typically, when you can throw it, you've opened up lanes for your runners. Snap will come from the 31 on second and seven. They go right back to Singletary. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. I really like the vision he displayed on that play because he saw there wasn't a lane to completely break off a huge gain. So he found where there was the most space and got what he could. A nice, dirty run that's a positive play for the offense. They'll try to run for this with Singletary. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight that moves the chains. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. First and ten, it's Stroud. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Back to throw, here's Stroud. And that went too high and incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target. But he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. 
Here's Stroud. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. But that's what they have to do more of defensively. Not just getting sacks, but they have to keep getting in his face. Not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carping them up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. Denver's offense now set to go. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. They begin the drive with Williams. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. 57 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at him and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all challenging that defense. And on that go around, the offense won the challenge. Stidham sets to throw on first. This one complete to Jerry Judy. Down to the 10. Score. Jerry Judy, 64 yards. And the Broncos are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. As a fan, is there anything prettier than a well-executed post route? No, it's a thing of beauty, especially when it's done like that for a touchdown. Uh, the throw, the catch, and how about the run after to get it to the end zone? Lutz to try to add the PAT. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays. The long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Houston set to take over. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Throw it with Stroud here, first and 10. Out to the flat, that's complete to his running back. And he got blown up on that play, back at the 20. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. It looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackle him for a loss. Stroud. And this is caught. It's Brown. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. A first down there on a pickup of 25. Kind of a dangerous throw there. He's off balance when he gets rid of it. But this is all about a quarterback knowing what he can get away with. At that time, it turns into a completion and a healthy gain as well. Stroud to throw it. And the Broncos get there and take him down. D.J. Jones 
in there to bury him for a loss of 11. The lessons will continue for this rookie. He's got to learn how to read situations just a little bit better. That far behind the line, he's got to find a way to get rid of the football and not take the sack, whether it's with his legs or just throwing it away. Well, they're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. Stroud. This will be caught by Brown. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. This offense so far on third down, they've hit four of seven. This is third and nine. Stroud working out of the gun. Now he steps away, and he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. Well, there were a couple of extra defensive backs in the game, so he really had nowhere to go with the football despite his search for an open receiver. So he has to take off and run for it, but he comes up well short of the line to gain. On is the punter, Johnston now, as he sends this one away. And that is very well done there, as this will be marked out of bounds at the five-yard line. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. Now they were good last time out with a touchdown drive. This go-around, it's not going to be very easy starting from inside their own five. But they shouldn't be daunted by it. You work on this the entire offseason. You work on it in practice. It's called coming out session. Start the ball inside the five, start on the five, on the ten. They should be ready to go. Now Stidham on first down. Here's a diving catch right side. Call that a very strong gain of 24. Well, they were backed up to start the drive, but how about that aggressiveness? Firing it downfield right away. Nice job there getting out towards what would have been their normal starting position. First and ten, it's Stidham. He'll drop this down to Williams. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Just need a yard here. Second and one. They'll run out of the gun here. Williams. And all oh, this Texans defense, they're all charged up now. They stop him behind the line for the second straight play. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Now Stidham. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And he will have a Broncos first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. And this pass rush has really been bringing the heat and has already gotten home a few times here in the first half. So how about the play call there? Sometimes if you can't protect, you've got to fool them. Screen passes like that can take a little steam out of what's been a relentless rush so far. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earn a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Now it's Stidham. He completes this to Sutton. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. The Broncos in their hurry up trying to get to their positions and get set quickly. 
Stidham. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 32-yard line. So the penalty declined, and they will keep the yardage on the completion. And you could almost see him compartmentalize there throughout the route. Fought hard at the line of scrimmage, a lot of hand checking throughout the route. Great job staying focused on the football and pulling it in through the contact. They'll throw on first down with Stidham. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Stidham again here on second and ten. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Now third down and very long. Out of the gun, Stidham. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. They converted twice on third down that drive already, but couldn't make it a third. We always talk about in-game adjustments. How about what the defense did there, able to shut them down on that attempt? Dixon, the punter, is on as he sends it away. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. The Texans with the football here late in this first half. And they've got a little over 40 seconds to work with if they want to try to put something together. Stroud now on first and 10. Over the middle and there's a diving catch. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Stroud to the air on first and 10. Shot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. And they're not going to go quietly into this halftime break. They know they're in for a fight, so they're trying to make every possession count. They took the big shot there, but it winds up incomplete. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Throwing now is Stroud. Got him in. It's Brown. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. On first down, here's Stroud. Throw left side, complete. That's Schultz. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. Again, it's Drowd. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. 
An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Stroud out of the gun here. As this completes to Woods. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's going to line up out right, then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a count or two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. And that is no good. And this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. Boy, Brandon, a missed opportunity there at the end of this first half. You'd love to give your guys a lead going into the break, but this effort doesn't find the mark, and that's going to keep things all square. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. And maybe a chance for a quick completion and then a long field goal try. We'll see. A short one to the tight end, Troutman. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. And that one will go down in the books as just a one-play drive and then three points tacked on to the end of it. And unless this is a quick incompletion, this is likely the last play here of this first half. Final play of the half, it's Stidham. He's going to take a shot at the end zone, why not? And it's knocked away and incomplete. So we've hit halftime all even at 14 apiece. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They're all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. started for the second half it was an even first half all tied on the scoreboard this fielded right at the goal line and he's up past the 20 to the 22 yard line so here's the Texans offense now they get set to start this third quarter this offense ready for the first drive of the third quarter well quarters number one and two entertaining we saw some good offense points put up Charles and all tied on the scoreboard. And it sets us up for what could be a really fun second half because we've seen both sides score almost at will here in the first half. And now here in the second half, getting the ball first, you've got to think, hey, we can go out and really run our offense the way we did in the first half. But if I'm a defensive player, all I'm thinking is, can I make a play to really help out my team and break this streak of offense? I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Singletary trying the left side. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. He's on his way. Touchdown, Houston. Devin Singletary. 78 yards. And the Texans come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter. You get in a second and long situation down here in the red zone, I'd say most defensive coaches will think pass. Let's bring some pressure. So this is kind of a tendency breaker here to hit him with something on the ground, and he'll take it all the way into the end zone. On for the PAT, Kaimi Fairbear. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. 
So two plays on that scoring drive. That's how they drew it up. And a long run into the end zone, and what a run it was. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. But Charles, you and I said in intermission, feels like we're set up for a good second half. Well, the other side scored, and now it's up to them to answer. How do they respond here with their first drive of the second half? Well, bottom line is they just saw the ball go in the end zone against their defense, and they saw what good offense looks like. They believe they've got a good offense as well. Run the best plays you've got to the top performers you have and try to move that ball down the field for an answering score. Stidham sets to throw on first. And this is incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Here's Stidham to throw. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. Well, so far in this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and 10. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. From the gun, it's Stidham. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I tell you what, third and ten, you look over, and you've got that punt team getting loose on the sideline. So that puts added importance on this play. You certainly don't want to see them on the field. And after a couple of incompletions, third time's the charm as they get the hook up here and pick up the first down. Now a 10th carry. Here's Williams. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. From the 44-yard line, here's second down and eight. Again, it's Williams. And a lane slow and materializing there as he'll get maybe a yard up to the 45. Now third down and seven. To throw is Stidham. Screen play set up for Williams. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. A Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, They've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. On first down, Stidham. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. They go back to the ground with Williams. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Early down stuff will put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. Here's Stidham. And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. Will Anderson. 
Peterson picks up his second sack of the afternoon. It has been a rough afternoon for him trying to get rid of the football. See, that's now five sacks. How'd you like to be the offensive coordinator, the offensive line coach trying to come up with an answer for this pass rush? What blocking assignments do you change? Can guys play a little bit better? And we're seeing the end result on the scoreboard. Long day in the pocket for their quarterback. This is a way, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And here comes the Texans now. And this drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. A shotgun snap to Stroud. Being chased out left. And Stroud wisely slides down safely after picking up the first down. Eight yards that time, able to take off, and the result is a first down. As we both know, there's a lot that went into why they made him their first round pick this year. Part of it was what they saw in college, his playmaking ability when things break down. As soon as he saw he wasn't getting a lane to throw, he pivoted and found an alternate way to the marker. They try to run on first down, but this defense says no dice. They stop him a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. If they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. Here's Stroud. Lots oh, of screen pass. That's complete. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Parker, I like the play call coming right after a tackle for a loss because this is an obvious passing situation. But instead, they fooled him a little bit with the screen, and they wound up getting back what they lost and then a little bit more. This now a third and four. Stroud looking to throw. A throw right side here going to be incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is set away. And Denver getting set to take the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. They'll try to get this running game going with Williams. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 70 yards for him on the ground now, as he has been terrific here this afternoon. A big hole there. How about him handling the point of attack? Just positioning himself so that, that run could go right off of his backside and deep into the secondary. Now Stidham, off play action. Connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. So a costly penalty yardage-wise as that'll move the football down to the spot of the foul. And what the officials are looking for in these situations, whether you're playing the man or the ball. And if you're playing the man, you get a lot less leeway in terms of what's going to happen at the end of the play. But if you're looking for the football, it's less likely to draw the flag. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle, but give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. 
From the 32-yard line now, here's second and nine. They run it again with Williams. And he struggles to get a yard here, maybe a yard, down to the 31. They need to get this to the 24 on third down. Play action. It's Stidham. Under pressure and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Will Anderson getting him once again his third sack of the afternoon. I don't know what else can be said about this pass rush. They have been sensational. CD, that is now six sacks for them. And how many times do we talk to offensive coordinators and they say a sack is a result of everyone on offense not doing their job? But let's be honest about this one. This is the offensive line unable to counter the pass rush. They've been teeing off all game long. So it's an empty possession, and as a kicker, not the way you want to start your day's work. And now each team's missed a field goal here so far, Brandon, so apparently... Neither guy is immune. Let's spotlight Devin Singletary as this offense comes back out. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're back, because that means everything's coming together for you. Big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block but they're helping out, too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. On first down, they'll start out with Singletary. And he'll get what he can up the middle, three yards. That'll bring up second down. Not a lot of running room there. Not a place to make a cut and kind of exit out because they had everything bottled up. Looked to me like the linemen were taking on their blocks really well and giving up no creases. From the 46, here's a second and seven. On the handoff, running left, Singletary. And they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. Back-to-back -back runs, I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. Third down and six. Now Stroud. And he'll get this underneath to Singletary. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I have to tell you, Brandon, I feel like a coach right now because I'm wondering why the angle route continues to be so effective when as an inside linebacker, you're always taught, don't let someone cross your face. If they want to go outside, it's okay. But they make that outside fake, cut back inside, off into great success. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Ball on the 40 now. Here's second down and seven. And Stroud now to throw. Dancing to his left. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. Oh, partner, just a second earlier, and they might have had him because they certainly thought they were going to close in and drop him behind the line of scrimmage, but he had just enough time to dodge the pressure, and he ends up getting yardage before being stopped. Two yards still to go, third down now. Play action. Here's Stroud. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor, and it's a first down. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them, and these guys have been taking advantage so far. Now they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and 10. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Alex Singleton making the play defensively. Boy, Charles, that time he took a bad situation and made it worse. Yeah, you're almost putting together a nice little song there, aren't you? Because it's something you'll see from young quarterbacks. They have that tendency to retreat backwards instead of stepping up in the pocket.
So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Stroud to throw it. And that one too wide and incomplete. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play. But sometimes you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one, weren't able to do so. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. Stroud. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Fairbairn able to put this one through. And the lead works its way up to 10, 24-14. So he missed that field goal earlier, but he says not this time. Able to knock it through, give his guys three. I like his poise. I like his confidence, his belief in himself. Sometimes when you miss that first one, you see a lot of guys sag and they can't make the next one. Not in this case. Stepped right up like a pro. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. So the Broncos coming out now. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, OK, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. They'll throw on first down with Stidham. This one swung out to Williams. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way. And really, we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Ball on the 36 now. Here's second down and one. Now it's Stidham. Finding Sutton on the out route who makes a catch. Able to get the one yard he needed, but nothing more. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Now a man who's been busy this afternoon. It's Williams. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Remember throughout my career here in defensive coach, they always say, guys, you got to earn the right to rush the passer. They put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. And looking at Houston defensively, they've got a dime set. Six DBs on third. Now it's Stidham. He's got a man complete. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. 
That was no third and two. That was third and 16, but they get the conversion anyway. And here's a spot where this offense says, we got to start making something happen. We're down two scores. It's the fourth quarter. We've got to start moving with some urgency. And here's a big play that gives them a ray of hope that they can get back in this one. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Stidham. Right back to Judy, and it's complete. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave them with a second and just a few inches left. Up the middle, it's Williams. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. 94 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. And he's got his man in stride, complete. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up first and goal. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. They'll try and run. This is Williams. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. Williams again, but he will go backwards as he stopped for a loss. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. And now third and goal coming up, the loss on second down. That just means this crowd's going to get even louder, and they'll get a little bit of extra help from the defenders as they exhort them to join them in the effort. On third and goal, Stidham. Touchdown, Broncos! Adam Troutman, a five-yard touchdown. And the Broncos have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury, and it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run and he finds himself open for an easy touchdown. Alonso looked to add the extra point. It's up and good, and this now becomes a 24-21 ball game. That one in the books as a 12-play drive, and it culminates in a touchdown by the Broncos. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. Heading out is the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and 10.
Stroud working out of the gun. And that would incomplete, but now a penalty flag coming in late. That might be P.I. So pass interference, the call there. Always, obviously, Charles, such a subjective call. You agree with the penalty? Well, from where we're standing right now, I think the officials are tightening things up here in the second half. Maybe a defender gets away with that in the first, but this time the flag comes out, and I think it's a good call. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and 10. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. That's complete. It's Collins. So the completion good for six yards, and that'll bring up second down. Stroud off the play fake. He'll let this go deep for Collins. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. Just because you've got the lead in the fourth, it doesn't mean you have to play it safe. I like the aggressive play call there to push it downfield. That time, it didn't work out. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Throwing now is Stroud. Short throw into the hands of Jordan. And he is going to have a Texans first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Stroud sets up the play action. Oh, and that is incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away, but the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Here's second and ten. They'll look to throw again. And oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. Those are the ones you dream of as defenders. I think if he gets eyes on the ball a little bit earlier, he might come away with it. Instead, it's going to wind up as just an incomplete pass. Stroud on third down now. Oh, what a heck of an effort there as he'll make the diving catch. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. So here's a first and 10 now, down inside the 20. A give up the middle to Singletary. And he'll get this down only to the 18. Alex Singleton, a former Canadian League star, in on the stop. They work now on second and nine. Operating from the gun, Stroud to the goal line, but it's incomplete. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. They're two for two on third down conversions on this drive. This one tough. They need nine yards on third down. Singletary, they'll go up the middle, and he'll only get this to the 17, well shy of what he needed. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. So a big one coming here for Kaimi Fairbear. This to swell the lead to six. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. 
so that gets him a little bit of breathing room, but not much. And you have to think back to the field goal that he missed earlier. This would be a two-score game right now if he had converted them. And if you and I are thinking about it, you know he is as well because in the back of his mind, he's thinking, I hope I get one more shot in an important spot. He just made that one. He wants one more later to truly make up for the earlier miss. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. They were trying to create some space to run. They created the penalty. And you work on it so much. You work on it so hard. But it's tough to simulate game speed in practice. And that often runs you into a penalty. So the hold on special teams backs him up all the way inside the 15 to start. Now a give up the middle to Williams. And he'll be taken down at the 18. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon. And I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. And got his man complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. Well, this is where an offense needs to show what it's made of. And in fact, where a quarterback needs to show what he's made of. Trying to engineer a fourth quarter comeback. And he hits a big one right there. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. They'll hand it off now. Williams. Got a good job of finding the open space to run as he's down close to the 30 here. Add this game to the last one and they move the ball over 50 yards in two plays. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he said of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. On first down, Stidham. A throw over the middle taken in by Troutman. It'll go as a gain of four, and it'll be second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Second and six coming up. To throw is Stidham. This will be caught. Judy. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. They come up on a first and goal with this game still hanging in the balance. And Williams is in for a Denver touchdown. A six-yard touchdown run. And the Broncos are an extra point away from taking the lead here in the fourth. So a toss play there does the trick as he's into the end zone. And you don't run this unless you're sure you've got a guy who has the speed who can get to the edge because what you're hoping for, for him to win the race to the corner and turn it upfield to the end zone. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. And that is going to put him up by one, and it sets us up for quite a finish here. A drive that time of six plays. And it was capped off by a Javante Williams touchdown.
after the touchdown, lots to kick it off. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he won't get this to the 20 yard line as he's down at the 19. So Stroud and the Texans down 28-27, a minute 53 remaining. They've surrendered a double digit lead but can rescue themselves late as they come up on first down. Stroud to throw it. The nice thing is that you've still got all your timeouts in the middle of the field. That should still be an option, especially if you see the defenders pinching the sideline. You can run a little seam route right here and pick up some nice yardage. Another try, second and 10 now. Stroud. Got his man, it's Woods. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Now Stroud. Into the hands of Singletary. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Partner, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. Plenty of time and two timeouts still at their disposal. First and 10 here. Meanwhile, Strong's throw complete into the hands of Schultz here. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. They'll come up first and ten here. On the give, this is Singletary. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. Now a timeout called for by the defense. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Here's second down. They'll toss this right side to Singletary. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. What can they draw up now? Time to find out on a third and eight. Singletary again, and he'll get this one down to about the 17. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to take the lead here in the final minute. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And the sideline celebrates as they have taken the lead in the final minute. And you know, in an era of cost cutting and maximizing your roster, this is a club that does not skimp on special teams. And in these situations, it pays dividends. And that's great vision by the organization. When the difference between winning or losing depends on who you have kicking the ball, would you rather have a street free agent out there or a solid pro like this? And just pretty evident to me. Fairbairn now following the main field goal. He'll send this one away.
Oh, good return up past the 30. And able to break this out all the way to the 38-yard line. Great return. This is first and 10. Now Stidham. Able to find Judy. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Here comes second down. Stidham. And that is incomplete. Stopping the clock with five seconds to go. One final shot now. I'm not even sure he can get it to the end zone, though, from this distance. That's going to take as much arm as he has, and you actually have to plan for the contingency. Maybe you're playing a tip. Try and get someone down who can tip it up and keep it for your own team and try and get to the end zone that way. Stenham with one final shot. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. This is caught inside the 15. And he's in. Are you kidding me? How do you give that up? One of the most improbable ways to finish a game. And they do win it on the final play. That was an excellent come from behind victory, Charles, especially there in the fourth quarter. Both offense and defense were clicking. They're going to feel good about this one. Boy, are they ever, because the deficit they faced certainly wasn't small. They obviously did not give up on that one. And in the end, how about that come from behind victory? They'll cherish this one for a while.